days before YouTube, if you can imagine such a thing, she'd head to HMV to hear her favourite stars sing, queuing up for CD singles, two ninety nine and her stomach tingled. She remembers one in particular, It Wasn't Me by Shaggy featuring Ricardo Rick Rock Ducent. There was a bonus feature and when you stuck it in a PC you could watch the video. She didn't really get what the song was about, but she liked it. Probably still got it somewhere in the attic at her mum's. Anyway, she's at the Mecca Bingo on Bridge Street. She needs a single number to win the house. Her right knee's tapping furiously. All the twos, twenty-two, two little ducks. That's what she needs to hear. Well, that's what she needs to hear right now anyway. It's her 23rd birthday. She's with Babs from upstairs and Sheila, Babs' mate. This time last year, watching fireworks through the window. Abandoned at home by boyfriend Stee, who went to watch the bonfire with the lads at the quay. She's felt more like an old maid with every week that's passed, but in these towns you reach puberty and your role is already cast. Her right knee taps and a dobber hovers, but the house is cold. A jubilant shriek from the corner of the hall and the psychedelic carpet is inviting her to fall. Babs heeds telepathy and buys another gin. She checks her phone and it's zombified swiping through the chasm that grows from two ticks to typing. Malicious rumours in a WhatsApp group assert in a CCTV. Stay in an alley with Tina from the flats and he swears it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Good evening everybody, welcome to Insta Session number 48. My name is Matt Abbott from Nymphs and Thugs and tonight we've got Rory Aaron. So Rory is a poet born in Derby, based in Manchester. Uh, his debut collection Doglike is out with Bearded Bad Badger Press and I'm going to invite so he can share some of his poems with us. Number 48. Silly that, isn't it? Who would have thought? I thought we'd do eight. Here we are. Hey, yo, mate, you all right? Yeah, how's it going? You okay? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Thanks for joining us. No worries. Am I on my side? Is that better? There we go. Yeah, sorted. Thank you very much for having me. It's all right. So, um, dog likes out. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, hey, how I'm feeling. Yeah, no, good. Like, bit overwhelmed. It's one of those things, isn't it? Like, you always want to get some stuff published, and when it does, you realise that means people are going to read it. And you're like, oh, oh God. Uh, but um, just like all the people that have bought it and supported it and stuff, it's really overwhelming and nice, really. So, um, yeah, no, buzzing just to have, like, a book that is, like, with poems. It feels really nice. Yeah, and, yeah, it's just a bit of a dream come true, really. Do you think it's changed the way that you uh, that you write or that you see your writing or? Uh, yeah, maybe. Like, I think it's interesting. Like, when like put in because writing sort of like a a personal thing, and then suddenly it's got like a bit of a public for so you do forum. So you do wonder if like if I do one again, like I'll probably I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll be a bit more self conscious. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it has. It's a, it's definitely interesting having people you read, having people read your poems who you know who would never know who would who would never normally ask you like certain questions and stuff. Suddenly know so yeah, much about it, and you're like, you know, "How did you know that?" Well, it's in your poem. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're like, yeah. Um, so have you had a chance to read it anywhere in person yet? Um, little bits, like little bits. Not, not, um, not as like a full collection, but um, yeah. a few. I have managed to do, I did a few um, performances of a few poems in the last lot, you know, briefly when oh, the last yeah. lockdown came to an end in like September, whenever that was. Um, yeah. But not, I've, but not, not yet. I'd love to. Like, um, I'm hopefully doing the night in Manchester in a few weeks. Um, and I, yeah, I need to kind of get it on the road, really. But uh, oh, yeah, it just feels weird not performing in so long. Yeah, yeah. And then get the fear a little bit. And so you've kind of got to kick yourself back out there. Well, why don't you share us a poem now? Get yourself ready. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, yeah, I'll do. Um, I'll do one called "Saying Hello." If that's okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Um, yes. It was a Tuesday afternoon. I was fighting with a scratch card, applying for youth provision in North Manchester. My phone vibrated. It was him in front of that homemade boxing bag, hung from an old oak tree den down Wyver Lane. A hanging pipe of PVC, three metres in length, the base a perfect ten-inch diameter. A piece of plywood stuffed inside, rolled with carpet cladding. His titanic shoulders let a rip, a dying frown, belly in ageing bloom, snorting, 
a crooked Chesterfield spire of a nose. Moving his fists, knuckles jagged like javelins, he landed blows, feet steady, up on toes, just like we were taught as kids. He'd have given David Damon Haig a match. Thud, crunch, thud, no gloves needed. Tennis court rules, men thrice his height. Before we even had anything to smell above our lips, the strut it gave him, a stone wall. His name a verb for worried mothers. He stops, faces phone, and grunts to the camera. No words needed, a tear beneath each eye, a cross on his proximal, proximal flannix. Lungs sharp and haggard, he disappears out of view. He must finally be out. Wow, nice. What a start. <laughs> yeah, no, cheers. Thank you. Did you have the opening one in the collection as well? No, no, no. The opening one is called My City and is one about um, growing up growing up in Derby. I can uh, I can read that one as well. Or not even growing up in Derby, just one about Derby and my love for, for that city. Like, it was such a cool... Yeah, I was going to ask, I'm intrigued. Like, obviously, you're now based in Manchester, so have you found that you've written about Derby a lot more since you left? Yeah, oh, like, yeah, definitely, because you reminisce about it, don't you, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I left, so I left originally when I was 18 and spent, for uni, then spent some time back in there and then left again. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely something that is massively um, defined who I am, I think, and, like, the way I see that city, but, I went to school, like, I went to school, like, in the city centre, and then I'm from, like, a town just on the outskirts, um, but it's definitely, yeah, like, to find the way I look at the world and stuff like yeah. that, the lens of that city, I think. Yeah, totally. Well, if you want to share it, that's totally cool, yeah, it's up to you. I'll just yeah, share no, it. no, go ahead, it's called, um, oh, nice, cheers, Anthony, big up, yeah, he's sick, Anthony's a sick poet, he's just commented in there, he's a... He's a really good poet from Manchester. Um, yeah, it's called My City. Um, from Derby. The mid lane of the Midlands. Smash glass of the A6. Last dance of the Derwent. Crash mat of the Peak District. Rolling out Rolls Royce pistons, laughing at Luftwaffe. Nails that hold your northern factories together. Knocking that, the 1715 Scottish Rebellion back up north. Ram like. Unafraid of any Goliath. Working proper graft down the Polish club, in mosh getting mashed, staggering home, accents and shaving, refusing to be muzzled. That's my city. Brilliant. Just that like a little place, like yeah, no, I just it's got a great it's got a great scene on it, Derby, and it's like it seems to me like Nottingham and Leicester get a lot more of the headlines, but Derby <laughs> sort of got a bit more going on, like once you actually visit it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it seems to over the last like few years as well, there seems to be really quite a lot of... Um, I definitely agree with what you said about Nottingham and Leicester. There's maybe Nottingham's definitely a slightly bigger city, but I think some of the writing and stuff that's coming out of Derby now is quality, is um, uh, is really, yeah, really interesting. And like I think those the voices of those poets like Sophie and Jamie um, really need to be heard, really. I think, yeah, yeah interesting take on the world right now. Yeah, totally, totally. Nice one. Well, no, I think it's really important. And like being from Wakefield, it's sort of, I know it's yeah. not similar, but it's not a million miles away, really. So, no, it's yeah. the same kind of vibe, really, isn't it? Um, it's the same kind of vibe, I guess. I'm all for it. Yeah. So, um, is there a poem in the book? Um, wait, let me rephrase it. If you were to show this book to yourself on the day that you wrote the first poem, sorry, wait, hold on, I'm getting there. If you were to show this book to yourself on the day when you wrote, wrote your first ever poem, which poem in the book do you think would surprise you the most? Ooh, bloody hell. In um, terms of style, uh, subject matter, tone, whatever, which one do you think would surprise you the most? Uh, ooh, um, which surprised me the most? Probably. Uh, which one would surprise me the most? That's a really good question. Um, I think, like... <laughs> Like, probably insert name. Um, right. No, in fact, probably dog is. Dog is, because I think it's like, I kind of came through, I think like a lot of people came through into poetry through probably writing like more raps and stuff like that as a kid. Yeah. So it came like heavy, and I still love to rhyme. Like, um, I think it's like a bit of a, I might like K's there, yes, K. Um, it's a bit of a, Unhidden. Like, I don't get why people. I still don't quite get why you meet certain 
realms of the poetry society that don't like rhyming and i've got a theory it's just because they can't do it properly like <laughs> you know what i mean like um yeah but anyway i think there's dog is is like the furthest away from that and i was surprised it was like the first probably one of the first poems i wrote and i was like okay maybe i could do like page poetry not yeah, just yeah, yeah. poetry if that makes sense yeah totally yeah totally yeah 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 interesting yeah. good um, well, do you fancy mm-hmm. sharing that one, or do you want to share another one? So I don't yeah. want to put you under pressure. Like, I'm curious. It's quite short, so I can I can share that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's called Dog Is, and it goes there. Uh, Dog Is reared on football pitch, in a changing room, on track in boxing ring, mask over temple, solitary. Dog Is blue walled, centre stage, bicep. Boys will be street corner knuckle, cut up lip into tightened jaw at funeral. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. Just like you say, when you come from like a musical background, having the confidence to write something that doesn't rhyme, it does feel a bit weird, doesn't it? It's almost like you're writing yeah. your first poem again. Um, yeah, it, we're yeah. Of it, cause you kind of came from quite a musical background as well, um, I guess. So, it, yeah, it like it's like learning all the things you normally do to impress people. You yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's very weird. But um, no, I was just curious because you always, I think you always, especially if you come from a, a more stage background, I think you always surprise yourself when you put a book together because you maybe have the confidence to put something in, but you feel scared to read in front of a crowd. Does yeah. that make sense? Um, oh, definitely. I think definitely. it's very liberating. Yeah. And it, it can, in a way, it allows you to be a bit more, a bit more subtle in some stuff because oh, I yeah. guess when you're on, on the stage, you kind of, you're kind of saying to the audience, like, this is it, I want you to understand it, and let's go on this journey together, kind of thing. Yeah. Because I guess when, when it's on a book, you can kind of say, I don't know if you, maybe you don't get it the first time, but maybe on the second, third reading, um, you can you, you can get it then, so you can, I guess it does allow you to be a bit more subtle and hidden at times, as well as more money, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't you, know if no, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, definitely. But then there's the whole thing of like you can't do preamble and you can't say, "Oh, this means." And so it's that sort of like just having the, just letting it go. Like, look, it's in the book. They'll interpret it as they wish. Because sometimes yeah. I have poetry books and I'm like, I ain't got a fucking clue what you're on about. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean, we all have that, don't we? But like, you do get there. Like you say, you got to. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I was just interested. So, um, I, have you found that you've been writing about? totally different things since the book came out as that sort of you've put that section of your life in the book and now you're moving on or are you still sort of developing the themes or uh, it, oh, that's yeah another, another great question um yeah well when it kind of when it came out i went through a stage right because in my head it was like i was like kind of write a a book yeah I was, when i found out i was going to get published i was like buzzing this means I, this means like confirms me as a poet now i'm good at poetry yeah. kind of thing but then i couldn't write I, I just couldn't write for a bit like i just i was kind of like sitting down being like oh buzzing yeah i'm a poet now i'm gonna i'm writing poems and just like utter rubbish was coming out and i, yeah. I was like i was trying to reenact the style of the book and yeah, so yeah. i had to like go on this journey where i took myself miles away from that style and just started writing about kind of everything in because that that the whole book's quite specific to kind of derby um and a certain time space yeah. so yeah yeah no to answer your question i started i guess it it kind of f- f- forced me to go um okay well if i'm gonna write more stuff i need to think of different things to write about i guess it's like what everyone says about the difficult second album in a way yeah, yeah. Like, you, you kind of that's it that's kind of what's in there is loads of things i've thought about for years that kind of came out and formed this book. Whereas, like now, if you want to write stuff, you've really got to think about it. Kind of maybe look into things that aren't an obvious poem to try and, and try and like draw the poem out of it in a way. Which is terrifying, but really exciting at the same time. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's liberating yeah. because you stop like totally focusing on yourself and start writing about like objects and things and other people and stuff like that, which is, like you said, yeah, really exciting and liberating. But also sometimes you look back on your first book and think, shit, how did I write that? I'm never going to be able to write anything that good again. Because you like, you write it with such freedom, don't you? Oh, like yeah. you say, a good little second album. And now suddenly it's like, okay, well, I've got to match up to that. I've got to do something different. I've got to, like, yeah. <laughs> Exciting, though, man. Exciting. Yeah. 
no, yeah, it is. Yeah, but um, I definitely get what you you kind of yeah, I get what you're saying. You do um, worry that you won't be able to churn out anything that's kind of maybe as raw or as like kind of yeah. emotional in a way. So, how do you think Manchester's had an influence? Because obviously, Manchester's a very literary cultural artistic city um do you think that's introduced you to new methods or new artists or oh no yeah it's city, Manchester, like it's an amazing city like um i think it's like if anything i guess like until i moved to manchester right was something that i kind of did and i'd occasionally write something like show some mates um, and they'd be like oh yeah yeah no that's quite good and, I'd, and that was kind of enough whereas i guess manchester for the first time i'd uh, the space and the the like obvious places to go to perform and to kind of actually be considered as a poet like kind of and like people show me how like almost like the ropes of how you can get your book, book public is that, yeah, is that yeah. real? That I think is in Derby now but I don't know if it was there or maybe it was kind of a few when I was there Um so my, I definitely feel like Manchester's like opened up yeah. those avenues for me and it's been an amazing city that because the, the scene in manchester the writing scene the spoken word scene the theater stuff that goes on the music stuff obviously is is incredible it, there's like so much stuff going on yeah, it's the poetry um, library as well though isn't there pardon the manchester poetry library as well yeah yeah well it's manchester city of, it's a city of literature now it's got the it got the funding from um unesco is it so there's there's so many different opportunities that are happening and it does feel like a real welcoming space. And obviously, um, like Young Identity and stuff, they're um, they're great. Like anyone who's under the age of twenty five um, or thirty should go and just check them out and write with them for a bit. Because yeah, just yeah. I mean, these poems are written. The whole dog like theme, the whole theme came from like a number of their workshops and like walking. Uh, yeah. out. Um, and so without those workshops, I, I wouldn't. And then without Roma, who. Um, there's a poet called Roma Havis, who is, um, she, yeah, she kind of took me under her wing during the start of lockdown and was like, send me over some poems. And I sent her some and she was like, oh, you might have a collection here. So without her and their help, there wouldn't have been, there wouldn't be a book, really. Nice. I'm just always fascinated about how, you know, obviously where you're from affects how you see the world in terms of, well, it's, you know, country, part of the world, mm. whatever, but just cities and play. I just think as a writer, it's so fascinating to see how drastically it changes. You know, like you leave Derby, so you start writing about Derby, you move to Manchester, you see these pathways. It's just always, I'm always interested to see people's journey, like, because it yeah, always sort of oh. happens to have done it, but it, <laughs> it's interesting. So what's happened? Because you, haven't you just moved back up north from London? So have you started, have you found you started reflecting on the south now? Um, Sort of, sort of, yeah, but I, I'm, Weirdly, I'm writing a lot of semi-autobiographical stuff at the moment, which is ironically about Leeds. So I've moved to Leeds and I'm writing more about Leeds. But it's, so it's worked nice. weirdly on this occasion. But yeah, like, uh, I wrote a shitload about Sheffield after I left Sheffield. I wrote more about Wakefield when I lived in Sheffield. So like, I definitely have experienced that. But mm -hmm. mate, um, I'm in all kinds of complicated headspace at the moment. But yeah, moving to Leeds <laughs> has been a good influence. But it's not about me. It's about you. So uh, it's 10 to. If you've got any poems that you definitely want to share... Uh, yeah, I'm just giving yeah. you a heads up, but I also won't force you to share anymore. You can do whatever you want. I'd just like to let people know because it time it flies by this half an hour. Um, yeah, go on. In, in terms of rhyming, can I share one called Small City? Um, yeah, yeah. Right. So it's the final. I guess just to I guess to give you a bit of the power before it's the final. It's the final poem in the book. Cool. And I guess I'd been as I kind of been putting this book together. I started being in being kind of more introduced to the kind of literary poetry world where rhyming is kind of frowned upon um, a little bit. Um, and so I really wanted to end it with a really heavy po rhyming poem because I, I don't know. Yeah, and just kind of be like, yeah, you can't flow like, yeah, check yeah, it. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So it's called Small City. Um, it goes, Small City, bus riding, Peter Storm Squadron, Knuckles, Cobbles, Wick, Joyriding with the Moon, Footlongs, Wambars, Homemade Bongs, Marching from our failed schools, Living out down Darley Park, Dodgy Body from the Spa, Danny Breaks on Sony Ericsson's, We mixed our Skittles in with crosses passed on by fathers, War stained just like our absence, Crucifix round our necks, Trackies, Baggy, Polish Backy, Temba Baggy, Stuffed in for a Perry, Ravinelli, Charm every Saturday night to Sunday, That was us, Uniform, Patrolling our Valley of Deer, 
thick with oaks, count, thick with oaks, council of war, the trenches of the city, overlooked far too often. Let's get it straight. It was Lamb's Mill that got this whole thing started. We owe this country nothing. So swivel on your recruitment. Strong in arm for a reason. Throw that flag in the current. Let's be for our city. Anything else is treason. <laughs> yeah, quality. You gotta end it with you gotta end it with your rhyme, aren't you? Fuck them. Yeah, you gotta no, end exactly. it with your mic drop, aren't you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me that was a bit of and it's probably yeah, yeah. For me that was a bit like that, I guess. Yeah. But well, but I mean that's who you are and that's where you've come from and like it's so easy in poetry to feel uh, that you're doing it wrong or that you're not good enough or that you, or whatever. It's so easy to, and I think it's sort of in a weird way is designed to make you feel like that. Like yeah. you know, it, there's gatekeepers and there's an establishment. I know it sounds ridiculous to anyone who's not into poetry, but it's definitely there. And any oh, sort of outsiders, you're very much made to feel like that's not poetry. Yeah, so, no. But then what's weird is if I find that, yeah, 100% agree with you on all of that. But then if you went into like a normal space and those gatekeepers, if they were to do a poem, then no one would like it. And so then yeah, what's no, the I point? Know. I know, I know, I know. And, and if, if you were to get the gig, a uh, poem at like a music festival and you did one that didn't rhyme, people would be like, so that's it's a weird one. And there's no right or wrong. Like I love writing poems that do rhyme and that don't. I just, yeah, I feel true. like it just depends on each individual poem, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I'm yeah, no. like the mood you're in, I guess. Yeah, I bloody love that. It was a great poem, great way to finish the book. An exclamation mark rather than an ellipsis. Yeah, That's no cheers. Like it's up, it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, just, yeah, no, rhyming I always think is like when footballers do tricks. Like, it's yeah. not, not necessarily needed, but it's fun to watch and fun to hear. Yeah, too right. <laughs> um, so... Have you have you been writing recently, or are you just in that sort of period where you're figuring out what the next collection is going to be? Yeah, no, I've been writing quite. So I've I've been working with a mate um, on an EP that is, that will be coming out. The first track will be coming out next week, um, which is great. Uh, so that was good. Like stepping out of the poetry world and kind of writing more lyrics was great. And then yeah. um, I've been working on a few. A few new poems. Um, if can I share one of the new yeah. ones? That, yeah, that's what I was sort of angling towards. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, close that. Um, it's called "Sign Out Load." Um, yeah, okay. It goes like this: A gentrified transit with a beautiful couple sponging off a sunset. A fixie swerves from wannabe Bukowski. Strip a Twix, snort the coffee, roll another lifestyle. A six pack, a black hole, a lost cat, a fat stash of hashtag plant-based refresh somebody is happy to announce refresh reload refresh twist the office chair and repeat a mantra slap on some skinny man 2 p.m eat an avocado tomato salsa salad whilst a friend counts his arm hair in jail sip filtered water recycle brush the dirt from a locally sourced courgette chew on a cigarette the sun fades into concrete glare at a map swipe right Later, act placid in a bar, pocket the sticker from an IPA, recount memories of backyards and pretend you don't enjoy the staircase, peel an onion for forgiveness. Everyone in here votes Labour, but nobody needs to. One day a tsunami will rain. Until then, we stay safe in our postcodes, walk home with our eyes closed, listen back to a voice note, swipe left, flush. Tomorrow, engines will rev through a layer of frost. Tonight, I'll fall asleep to a podcast. Fucking hell, that was awesome, man. That was so good. That was so good. Is that a new one, then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, it's a new one that I've been... Like, I don't, do you know when? I've been tinkering with it for, for a while. Um, but it's kind of... Do you know when you feel like it's slowly getting there? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, now, kind of thing. Um, oh, that was class. That was class. Oh, I really enjoyed you. that. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Everyone in here votes Labour, but no one needs to. Yeah. I mean, there were so many lines in there, like, you may count in the arm here in prison and stuff like, yeah. Class. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. That means and a it, lot. It's submitted somewhere. Yeah. Well, events, yeah. I get this. It's like the, it's weird. Yeah. Oh, it's just weird, isn't it? Like, the kind of submitting picture and putting it out I've there. I've never like, it, to be honest. I've really? Always it. It's just the thing that you're doing it, but that's... Yeah, um, well, you think it's the thing like if you, I don't know, some, you don't, 
I think, yeah, this thing, you can do it, but also there's something about performing on stage, or even just showing it to your mates. Like, I, I kind of sometimes I miss that, or recently I've probably gone back to just that and kind of getting a bit of a vibe off that, just kind of yeah. posting it to a few friends and then being like, yeah, no, no, that's really good, then going off to do some, then they go, and being like, yeah, okay, cool, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always just found that you just did it on stage. If you've done it on stage three or four times, you'd sort of know by that point what needs changing or if it's working or not. Exactly, yeah. And it's weird how, like, a poem can, the more you perform it, that, do you find you fall in and out of love with certain poems? And you can oh, yeah. Back, perform oh, try, absolutely. Sometimes it's weird. Sometimes you can perform a poem, like, nine, ten, eleven times, and then you suddenly realise, oh, shit, actually, that, there's certain bits that you reinterpret and appreciate more, like that you've written with your subconscious or whatever. Um, but also there's certain points where it's like, I really can't be asked performing this, but I sort of, it needs to be in the set or it contains mm. something that I really want to say. Um, mm. And I think that's when you're putting together a set list, it's recognising the flow or depending mm. on what space you're in, like what message you want to give. And I think it's having that discipline of knowing, no, this poem needs to be performed at this point, which sounds weird, but I think it's important as a performer to not just do what you want to do. Sometimes. Yeah. Very true. That's, that's very true. Obviously, a whole sort of weird argument. Um, yeah. Um, well, it's 5-2. It's entirely up to you if you want to share one more, but you don't have to as well. You've, you've, you've shared loads. I'm just giving you the opportunity just in case. But, yeah, I'll share, I'll share one more if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we know. Uh, 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 this one, just yeah, this one is my mate. I've got a, a mate who, who, do, who writes a bit, but he sent me like a free write. He's called Josh and he's brilliant. Um, and then I like the free write caught me for ages, and then I ended up writing a response to it. So it's kind of like I've performed it. I've performed it once, but it, it kind of feels like our poem, not just my poem, if that makes mm. sense. So I've got to shout him out. Josh Allen, best poet <laughs> nobody knows about. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's called Digger, he goes. He sits with carpal tunnel, stirring coffee and whiskey into the morning. The winter sun climbs out of the back alley. He understands his day, digging as he has always done, aware of his oppressors, unaware he is oppressed. A plucked pheasant hanging from the mantelpiece, old, rigid, heavy with a ticker that can't push those simple pleasures. Soon the van will crawl onto the curb outside, wheels crunching the creeping thistle like it always does, driven by that younger lad. The bell will ring so he will stand with a tightened flask, a pair of gloves, a hard hat, a pack up, hunched with short, sharp, unsteady breaths. Brilliant. Nice one. How are you? Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, you oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for. Um, Thank you very much for having me. Mate. No, no, really. Thanks for thanks for coming on. I'm glad we got there. It ended like it's great. It's great. It's yeah. great to have you on. Oh, cheers! Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, thank you. Um, and obviously, it's the French France v Germany match in a bit. Is it? Oh well, yeah. I best keep an eye out. I've not been I've not been keeping track at all. But um, no, nah, quality man. I'm really glad you could join us, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you at some point. Up, oh, no, I'm sure I will in Manchester or wherever. Yeah, but, um, no, definitely. Well, next time, just drop me a message. It'd be great to meet you. Go for a pint or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. So, uh, in terms of your book, uh, do you have copies that you're selling yourself, or do we send people to the publisher? Or yeah, the best so to buy it? it's published by Bearded Badger Publishers. Yeah. They're a new publisher. They're based in Derby, and they're amazing. They've been so supportive um, of my writing. So you can, if you yeah, if you click on my. Um, if you click on my profile, there's a link to it. Um, right, cool. Or just, just Google Bearded Badger, and it's on the website there. But um, And they've got, like, so this this collection is part of a wider thing called Traverse that they're, they're promoting, which is loads of, I think there's about 10 poets from Derby, Derbyshire, um, that they're all supporting for their first collection. So it's an amazing project. Oh, it's an amazing yeah. project. Um, and they're a brilliant publishers, and they've been, you know, they've been so supportive. So big up Bearded Badger Publishing. Fair play. Well, get it direct from Bearded Badger. Don't be going anywhere else. Um, yeah, don't, cool. yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, mate. Well, take care. I shall see you soon. Yeah, see you soon, mate. Thank you very much. All right.
So that was the brilliant Rory Aaron. Uh, make sure you check out his collection, Doglike. Uh, next week, we've got Mohammed Musa, who is from Gaza. So he's one of the leading uh, Palestinian poets at the moment. He's going to be sharing some some poetry from Gaza, which is going to be an incredible experience. Um, and then after that, it's number 50, which I think is the last one. But who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. Maybe we'll be in lockdown for, for another two years. Fuck knows. But um, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. We are some folks. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week for Mohammed. Mohammed Musa. Cheers.